So as far as what uh, SynthNet supports right now, so I'm just going to kind of read off the list. And again, you can kind of uh, check out the website uh, for some more information, but I'm just going to go off basically the way this experiment worked and kind of what it supports. So at the heart of SynthNet, it's made up of these neural structures, these individual structures. Um, and these have, you know, you can define their morphology, so their size, um, their length, you know, the, the orientation. Um, it also keeps track of things like, uh, you know, resistance and capacitance of the, of the, uh, the plasma membrane, so you can emulate things like myelination. Um, it also keeps track of both intracellular and extracellular substances. Uh, that includes, like, ions and neurotransmitters and proteins uh, and any kind of substances. It keeps track of both inside and outside the neural structure. Um, we also uh, have within the plasma membrane, it keeps track of channel objects. Um, and just like channels in actual um, uh, neurons, these uh, have basically uh, 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 subunits associated with them, and these subunits uh, dictate uh, what kind of ions can pass the channels, uh, what kind of gating is on the channel, so, you know, if it's voltage gated or if it's ligand gated, um, if it has activation gates, if it has inactivation gates, um, you know, what kind of receptors it has for ligand receptors, uh, you know, what the agonists are, what the antagonists are, so you can say, you know, this is a glutamate receptor, you know, that kind of thing. So that's kind of cool. So, you know, for this, you know, for this example, we, on all neural structures, we set up our, you know, our standard leak channels for uh, sodium and potassium, calcium, and chloride uh, to maintain a, uh, a resting uh, membrane potential, which we can see you know, is around negative uh, 70 or so uh, millivolts right now. So we set those up, and we set up some uh, pump channels and also some um, astrocyte and enzyme activity to uh, regulate homeostasis uh, within the substances within the intracellular and extracellular uh, matrices. So we had that going. We also put um, uh, voltage-gated uh, sodium and potassium channels that allowed for the action potential that we saw. So once the, uh, once the membrane potential reached a certain uh, voltage level that caused the sodium uh, channels to open up and allow the influx of sodium into the intracellular uh, space, which changed the membrane voltage up more and action potential and all that good stuff propagate down the line. Um, within our uh, uh, dendritic structures, uh, we set up uh, AMPA-style uh, receptors um, that uh, had uh, glutamate uh, agonists uh, binding so that they would activate when uh, they bound with glutamate. And we also set up uh, NMDA-type uh, uh, receptors that, had, that were both voltage-gated and ligand-gated so that they required both the membrane voltage to be at a certain level uh, as well as uh, being bound to uh, glutamate. Uh, this allowed for an influx of calcium into the dendritic structures, uh, which uh, caused a genetic reaction that grew more uh, AMPA receptors, as we'll talk about in a second. Um, and in the axon terminals, uh, we set those up with uh, voltage-gated uh, calcium channels so that when the uh, membrane potential was raised to a certain level, it allowed the influx of calcium, which released uh, the synaptic vesicles into the um, the uh, synapses between the presynaptic and the postsynaptic neurons there. So um, that that's really the, it's it's just standard you know standard um, neurophysiology as far as that stuff works. Um, again, it keeps homeostasis by um, using uh, glial cells like astrocyte, you know, virtual glial cells, things like that. Um, as far as the calculations, um, it uses um, GHK. For uh, membrane potentials, it, it, it calculates uh, channel permeability using uh, Hodgkin-Huxley and uh, uses like cable equation to do electrotonic spread, things like that, um, just standard equations to do that kind of stuff. And as mentioned before, it uses a TCP-IP-based uh, peripheral nervous system, so we can actually clamp the, the, the voltage depending on the, the input that's coming over a TCP-IP network. Um, it can maintain as many connections as it needs to it at, at one time, which is kind of cool. All operates in uh, virtually in parallel, so you can have as many as you want operating at the same time. Kind of neat stuff. And let's see what else we have here. So as far as so that's like kind of the neurophysiology piece. As far as the genetic piece, each one of these structures is actually running a virtual machine inside of it. Um, so you know this little piece, this little piece, this little piece. They're all running virtual machines. You know, a little virtual computer inside there. So that virtual machine is actually a, a Turing complete machine. It actually has a full instruction set. Um, but what's cool about this instruction set 
is it's actually a, a genetic instruction set. You know, it's got your standard logic uh, instructions. Um, you know that you'd expect inside of a computer, but it also has the genetic oriented ones that control things like uh, it can control protein synthesis, you know, it can grow new proteins, or, or it can, you know, detect ion concentrations, or it can grow new structures, it can grow new channels, it can create synapses. Anything that's associated with a neural net, there's actually an instruction for it, an actual genetic machine instruction, which is kind of cool. Um, and anything that it can uh, write, it can also read, it can also detect. So in the case of our, uh, like our CAMK2 protein kinase, um, it actually uh, looked for that protein, and it looked for calcium levels, and if it detected both the CAMK2 uh, protein kinase and a calcium level above a certain amount, then it actually generated new AMPA uh, receptors, which is how BIT learns to associate the sound, uh, because the, that genetic reaction happened down here um, using the, the genetic virtual machine that runs inside all these little guys. So from here, I mean, that, that's, that's basically the, the, the project as it is right now, the end of phase one. The, the, end, of the, the end of the phase was, um, the goal was to have a neural net that could learn after uh, being grown uh, via virtual DNA. So that, that's working now. So from here, it's kind of got kind of a, a branched uh, phase approach. So one of the phases is going to be growing more and more complex structures using DNA. Um, my next goal is to uh, start growing rudimentary hippocampus and, and using um, more uh, memory-oriented functionality, which I'm really excited about. And the other portion of the other phase of this is kind of going more towards the, uh, the genetic piece. Specifically, this instruction set for this, um, for the virtual genetic virtual machine is very resilient and very uh, um, re resilient to mutation. Um, it can, it can, process a lot of errors um, in, in the DNA. So the idea is actually to run these virtual neural nets in a virtual environment, uh, multiple neural nets, actually multiple uh, virtual organisms, um, and uh, subject them to natural selection and to have them, uh, assuming they survive that natural selection process, to propagate their DNA to new virtual life forms um, and subject that DNA uh, to mutation, um, which will either, um, you know, improve or, 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 or um, decrease the survivability of the next organism. And hopefully we can uh, demonstrate you know, natural selection using the, the virtual DNA and, and show that it works uh, with, with this SynthNet product. So kind of cool, kind of exciting. So I hope to keep posting to my blog and uh, keep posting some new videos as, as, uh, as we make some more progress with this project. I'm really excited about it. So check out the website if you would. Uh, check out, I'm always posting pictures on there and graphs and kind of stories and everything, so check that out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.